in this integration part two video, I'm just going to do a couple of tag along topics, fundamental theorem and uh, separation of variables, and then we'll do the sequence series on another video. But for, for this time, whenever I take the derivative of the antiderivative, that's called the fundamental theorem of, of calculus corollary one, okay? And if you do this this way, what are you doing first? The derivative or the antiderivative? You're doing the integral first and the derivative last. That's important because will there be a plus C? No plus C, right? Okay, so here's what happens. If I take the derivative of the antiderivative, I just get the function. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say that this is going to be x, x squared of the sine of 3, that minus that squared sine of 3 times that. And what am I going to put in first in this top one? X to the fifth. Yep. What am I going to put in second? X to the second. Now, if you did this uh, and you looked at a multiple choice, you'd get it wrong because you have forgotten to do one thing multiplied onto each of these. I can't fit it here. I'm going to put it here. What is it that I need here? Close. One third. The, the derivative of x to the fifth. So it would be 5x to the fourth. And the derivative here would be derivative of this, which is 2x. So if you look on that yellow sheet, it's got this really fancy formula. But um, it's really just saying that you take the same thing here and you put it here and here. And then you, you plug the 5x, x to the fifth in to the top here, wherever there's an x. And then you put the x squared here and here, wherever there was an x. And then don't forget the derivative, and it's really easy to do. Don't forget the derivative of this little thing. This is the derivative of x to the fifth that you plugged in in green. And this is the derivative of x squared that you put in. Now, this is so much simpler if this were like a 0 or if this were a 5, because what's the derivative of a constant? Zero. So we like it if this is like, you know, my favorite number, 52, which is my age right now. So this would be, you'd put the x to the fifth in times the derivative, and then you'd put the 52 in here, but what would happen? It would just be zero. So there wouldn't be a second part. Okay? All right. Let's, so that's fundamental theorem. The next thing we want to just quickly hash over, and I apologize, I didn't, think of these ahead of time, so I'm not sure if it's going to be perfect. But let's do dy dx is equal to, let's just do x squared y cubed, okay? And you're going to do that derivative, gentlemen in the back row, and you could help me a lot by not talking. It would really help a lot. So what do you do to take this we're going to integrate this, separate them. So, yeah, like Kyle and uh, Arjun should be separated right now. <laughs> Not just here. Which is just a moment. So I'm going to put the dy over y cubed. And so this is Kyle. And then this is going to be Arjun. He's going to be over here, x squared dx. And so then now what can we do? Integrate. Now, just a little comment. I think this is really easy. If you think of this rate being split and that the, the rates have to be where, where do these things need to be? The numerators. So it's not hard if you think there's no mystery of where things go. Where does the x go? Where's the y? You just got to get the dy and dx's in the numerators. And then the variables have to follow. And this one's kind of an interesting one because this one is just x cubed over 3. And this one is, uh, let's see, y to the negative 2. 
over negative 2. Uh, where should I put the plus C? You can put it on either side. It doesn't matter, but I like, I always put it on the right just to keep it clean. So then what they might say is find the equation. This is an equation finder technique where you're going to have a point like, well, here I can make it up, 1, 2. So what is that point 1, 2 going to help us do? Find C. So then uh, if I put a 2 in there, this is just going to be 1 over uh, 8 is equal to 1 over 3. Oh, I got a nice number there. So uh, yeah, this is worth mentioning. C is equal to 1 eighth, negative 1 eighth minus 1 third. So can you do this in your head? It's going to be negative 11 24ths. Can you do that in your head? No? OK. I'll let you deal with that. So then uh, your answer is going to be y to the negative 2 over negative 2 is equal to x cubed over 3 minus 11 over 24. And sometimes what they'll ask you to do is they'll ask you to solve for y. <coughs> Excuse me. So you get y to the negative 2 is equal to uh, negative 2 times x cubed over 3 minus 11 24. Uh, we are not out of the woods yet. Now what do we need to do? Oh, yeah, we need to flip this thing over, and this is just going to be 1 over negative 2, x cubed over 3, minus 11 over 24, and we can take the square root of both sides, plus and minus, to get that. Oh, real quick, what's the square root of 16? Huh? Huh? What's our minus 4? No, it's just 4. I ho hope that didn't get on the video. Uh, let's do that real quick. That's a misconception people have that it takes forever to break loose of. Um, let's do um, what is x squared equal to 25? This is a parabola, okay, and it goes like this. And there's two roots to it. One is negative 5 and one is 5. You know there are two roots to it because um, if I put a 5 in here, it works, and a negative 5 in here, it works. But the way I like to remember it is x squared minus 25 equals 0, right? Show me what x squared looks like. Show me what minus 25 would do. goes down. What is this saying? When is the y equal to what? 0. How many arms do you have up? 2. So how many are there going to be? Two. That's if you have this situation. Okay. Now, if you switch this, okay, now what you have is y squared minus 25 equals zero. What are we saying this time? We're saying that, show me what uh, y squared looks like. Looks like this, minus 25, goes like this. And what is, what is happening, what is happening with this thing? It's hitting what twice? Here, here it was hitting the x-axis. Here it's hitting the y-axis. And we've got a problem with this. This is not a function anymore. So the way we handle it is we say, well, y squared equals 25. y must be equal to the square root of 25 plus and minus, because it's tilted this way. So this comes from a different function than this does, and it's no wonder people get them mixed up. We, we uh, have, when we say the square root of 25, we have to distinguish it from the opposite of the square root of 25. So if I'm saying the square root of 25, I'm not even talking about that one. Show me with your arms the square root of x. How many arms do you have up? So how many answers will there be? That's the way you can remember it. Another one is, is what's the domain of this? x greater than what? This inside a root, it has to be greater than 0. 
could there be a negative? If, it's, if the domain's greater than zero, could it be a negative? No. So you've got it, hopefully, that the square root of 25 is what? Well, let's do this one. What's the square root of 121? Say it. Louder. Thank you. Yeah. Maybe that'll stick. Okay. Uh, last thing is with integrals, we've talked about every kind of integral thing except this guy and slope fields. Okay. And um, these are two optional ways to find y functions, like separation of variables. The slope field is my favorite, though, dy dx. This is just like an equation for finding slopes. So all you would do is you would say, let's say we have um, four points. <laughs> I'm going to keep it simple. Here's zero. There you go. So at point, what's the slope if you have x is 0 and y is 0? What's the slope? 0. What if x is 1 and y is 0? What's the slope? 1. What's the slope if uh, y is 0 and x, or x is 0 and y is 1? Slope is 1. How about if they're both 1s? Slope will be what? 2. So the way this will look will be flat. At point uh, 1, 0, it'll have a slope of 1. At point 0, 1, it'll have a slope of 1. At point 1, 1, it'll have a slope of what? 2. And that's all there really is to a slope field. Uh, you could pick a point, like, let's say I pick this one, and if you followed it, you could maybe see what that function is. So what we're doing is, in drawing the slope fields, we're finding the function in reverse. That's what we're doing. The whole point is to find a function. And you can do that with a slope field. Euler's theorem says that if you take y n plus 1, that'll be equal to your previous n plus h times f of x n y n. So if we had an equation like dy dx equals x plus y, what I'm saying here is that this thing, I don't want that color, this thing is this. That's your y equation. So let's say we have x0 equal to 2, uh, y0 equal to 1, h is equal to point, um, three, and we're going to go to x is equal to 0.6. Now, how many is that going to be? Well, we're starting at 0. We're going to end at 0 0.6. How much are we going each time? 0.3. So how many am I going to have to do? How many times? Just two times. Just two times. So with that, you're going to have... Um, yeah, x0 equal 2, y0 equal 1, h equal a point 0.3, and y1 is what we're looking for. Then you would just go ahead and put that formula down, and I like to, I like to be a little more graceful with it. I like to go y1 equals y0 plus h, okay, times... Uh, x0 plus y0, just to kind of give you a feel for what I'm going to be plugging in. So 1 plus 0.3 times 2 plus 1, and that'll be y1. So what will y1 be? 1.9? You do the next one. Integral part two.